Ugh. I took a few steps back and punched a tree in frustration. Ow! Have a seat, Hobby. There's no need to lose hope, Aunt Nancy said. I sat down and looked at her. Okay, let's review the situation. My best friend and my sister are tied up, and it's just a matter of time until they're skewered by pirates. It's all my fault because I couldn't keep my stupid mouth shut, and how am I helping? I'm talking to Wiki's aunt, who might be a forest witch with actual superpowers. So clearly, I've lost my mind. Now am I allowed to lose hope? Not yet, Aunt Nancy laughed. Okay, then let's not forget that it's me who has to save them. Not Wiki the brains, not Brady the muscle, Hobby the stomach, the hungry dummy who just kind of hangs out with them and cooks tostones. Now I've definitely lost hope. Aunt Nancy stood up and walked a slow circle around me, studying me like she was a lion. Probably a nice vegetarian one. Now, I agree that Wiki's the brains and Brady's the brawn, but do you not realize your role in the trio? It might be the most important of all. I scratched my head. I guess I make a mean triple-decker peanut butter banana and sauerkraut sandwich. Is that important? Aunt Nancy laughed and shook her head. Who solved the mystery of the school? Whose curiosity led to the truth about Sinister's teachers? And who came up with the plan to solve that mystery? I thought about it. I guess I did. Yes, you did. Because you are, she looked at me expectantly, a B-plus chef? An artist, Hobby. You're creative, insightful. You like to make beautiful, delicious things, and you have a very different way of looking at the world. You're much smarter than you realize. It's just a different kind of intelligence than Wiki has. Personally, I think you're the one who actually woke up Andy. He's taken quite a liking to you. You don't know that. You haven't even met Andy. Aunt Nancy stood up and patted the tree behind her. Javi, I've known Brosigliandas for a very long time. A very, very long time. Remember when he purred at me that night I stopped by? Oh, yeah. I thought that was weird. So, are you a wizard or something? Did you make Andy out of the tree? And why do you make that colossal crashing sound when you disappear into the forest? Perhaps we should tell stories later. Your two friends are waiting for you to save them, and they trust that you can do it, as do I. I looked back into the clearing. Baldy was sharpening his sword with a rock and glaring at them while Rex sat in front of Wiki learning about the internet as he played with a sword. Can you help me? Aunt Nancy shook her head. I'll leave it to you to save your friends. I have complete faith in you, Javi. Now time for that mysterious crashing noise, she winked. In the blink of an eye, Aunt Nancy disappeared into the shadows, and then there was that sound, like a tank trampling through the trees. I turned back to the pirate camp, stood as tall and threateningly as I could, gathered up all my bravery, and walked right into the clearing. Brady and Wiki looked over, and their jaws dropped at the exact same time. The pirates looked over, and Baldy got a huge smile on his face. That's the third one. Waltzed right into our camp. We'll be heroes. Stop, I said in my loudest, most intimidating voice which wasn't super intimidating, to be perfectly honest. Untie my friends, or you will suffer the wrath of Javi, the greatest wizard in the land. Rex looked a little nervous, but Baldy just laughed. Great wizard, eh? Well, show us one of your magic tricks. You, uh, you don't want to see my magic. It's too dangerous. Uh-oh, I really should have thought this through before I decided to do a standoff. If I snap my fingers... Something, something super deadly will happen. Rex looked afraid. Baldy laughed harder. Oh yeah? Snap those fingers, boy. Snap them. I dare you. I raised my hand, fingers ready to snap. You have until the count is three to run before I snap. I tried to look serious and threatening. I'm guessing I looked the opposite. One, Rex stood up just in case I was serious. Baldy crossed his arms against his chest and stood firm. Two, Rex started backing away slowly. 
Baldy just smiled wickedly and shook his head. Two and a half? Okay, what was I going to do now? What could I do but three? Snap. Rex and Baldy's eyes both went wide and Rex screamed, Run! Baldy fell on his butt, then scrambled to his feet and ran away at full speed, Rex following him. That's right, run away. Ha! Huh. Wow, I couldn't believe that worked. I walked over to Brady and Wiki. Brady had a huge smile on her face, but Wiki looked as terrified as the pirates. Wiki, it's me, Javi. I'm not really a great wizard all of a sudden. Chill out. Then I noticed they were both looking behind me. When I turned around, three epic warriors were entering the pirate camp, glaring at the pirates. Well, two epic warriors and a kid. There was a guy dressed up like an ancient Asian warrior and wearing some seriously rad armor, an Egyptian queen who looked very familiar, and a boy in a white wig who was maybe a sidekick. Wait, not any boy. Kid Mozart! And you brought your superhero friends? Is this real life? I checked my forehead to make sure I didn't have a fever. Kid Mozart dashed over and gave me a hug. Looks like we got here just in time. Now let's get our friends loose. The ancient warrior did a flip and two somersaults, landed right in front of Wiki and Brady, and in one move held up, pulled out a huge curved sword and sliced both trees. All of the rope fell into a pile. How in the world did you find your way back to our time? Wiki said, rubbing his rope-burned arms. You think you're the only one with plans? Brady said, strutting over with a huge smile. Kid Mozart gave her a hug. It was all Brady, he said. She summoned us secretly so we could be reinforcements if things got dire. Remember when I pushed Blackbeard and then shook his coat this morning? I did that to ring the bell. That's why I raced back home, sick. I had summoned these three. So the bell worked even from far away. But what about the place cards, I asked. I'd planted them right after you guys left for school. That's why I had to catch up with you. I nodded my head in amazement. Wow, I had to hand it to her. It was a pretty genius plan. Wiki looked happier than I'd ever seen him. He hugged Brady tightly and then realized what he was doing, took a step back and coughed awkwardly. Thank you, Brady. You, you saved the day. Then he looked around and tried to recover. Glad to have you back, Kid Mozart, but who are your friends? Brady looked over at the man with ancient armor who was studying the blade of his sword and the Egyptian queen who was surveying the scene. You don't recognize my personal hero? This is Cleopatra, queen of Egypt, one of the smartest, greatest rulers of all time. I thought she'd be good for our team. Cleopatra smiled and nodded at us. It is good to meet you. We have work to do if we are to defeat the pirates, Cleopatra said. I waved awkwardly. Wiki's eyes couldn't have gone wider. And he's from the place card you wrote for the assignment, Wiki, Brady said, pointing at the armored guy. You did a report on him earlier this year, and I remembered you yakking about him for weeks on the walk to school. I knew we needed someone to face pirates, so who better than a ninja? Wiki's face got super solemn, and he knelt on one knee. Looking up at the warrior, he asked, Hattori Hanzo? Is that you? The warrior nodded once, as solemn as Wiki, then went back to studying his blade. Um, I'm blanking. Who is this guy, I asked. I guess I usually just ignored Wiki when he was talking about school stuff. Hattori Hanzo, Wiki said in a soft voice, still obviously in awe. Probably the greatest ninja of all time. We are honored, Mr. Hanzo. He looked at each of us very seriously and then quietly said, There is no time to waste. What of the pirates? Brady's face went from family barbecue Brady to warrior empress Brady. Gather around, everyone, she said, motioning for us to huddle. Here's the situation. Blackbeard and his crew are hunting down Principal Gale and forcing her to walk the plank. Then they're going to try and destroy Andy, our table, and then it's world domination time. But none of that's going to happen because they mess with the wrong kids. She slammed her fist into her palm for emphasis. Now, was your mission successful? The table is hidden deep in the school, Hanzo said. We have brought ourselves, bought ourselves a little time, but perhaps only a little, if this pirate is as clever as you say he is. Brady had them hide the table? 
Wicky let out a low whistle, clearly impressed. Now we must strategize, Cleopatra said. If my math is correct, we have two adults and three children against 15 of the most dangerous pirates in history. I can hold my own, and Mr. Hanzo will make short work of some of them, but we need to even the odds. Reinforcements, I said. We need to gather the teachers, at least the ones we know that Andy summoned. Ahab would probably be pretty useful, and Frida Kahlo seems like she could kick some serious butt, and Miss Vlad's definitely a vampire, so she could take on a few of them. Javi, Wiki groaned, your vampire theory is almost as annoying as your sandwich theory. A whaling ship captain and a famous painter aren't going to be a ton of help against pirates, and Miss Vlad is just a mean English teacher. Don, Quickie, Molly, Cat, I muttered to myself. We need to solve that riddle to unlock those characters for the boss fight. Kid Mozart raised an eyebrow. Clearly the dude didn't play video games. Don Quickie. That book sound familiar to any of you guys? It was a shot in the dark, but why not? Don Quixote? Kid Mozart asked, perking up. The Knight? My father used to read that book as we traveled to my concerts. It was his favorite. Don Quixote, I said, jumping up. The painting in Dad's room. Brady high-fived me as we both realized it at the same time. There's this painting of a knight on a horse and his little sidekick on a mule that seems to be on the wall of every Puerto Rican house. Brady and I asked Dad about it once, and he told us it was Don Quixote, the most famous hero in Spain from one of the most famous books of all time. A ninja, a warrior queen, and a legendary knight can take on those pirates. Let's go find Don Quixote. There is no time to lose then, Cleopatra said. You, Brady, and I can gather up the teachers. Hanzo, Kid Mozart, and Wiki will head straight to Blackbeard to ensure he doesn't murder the principal. Wiki nodded. Meet us at the pool. The pool? All of us turned to Wiki. Dude, this might not be the best time to perfect your backstroke, I said. Think about it. He wants to make the principal walk the plank. What's the closest thing a school has to a plank? Right. Brady and I nodded excitedly, but all of our guests still looked confused, so we had to explain what a diving board was, and then explain what a plank was, and then explain to Hanzo and Cleopatra exactly what pirates were. Once we were all caught up, we jumped out of our huddle. To the school, and the pirates, and probably our deaths, I yelled, and we took off through the forest at full speed. Chapter 34 the action movie music was blaring in my head. I looked around as we dodged trees and headed toward the morning light in the distance. An ancient queen sparkling with epic jewelry, a legendary warrior with katana swords sheathed in his epic armor, and a brilliant musician kid in a powdered wig. Some hero squad we were. For all the headaches and nightmares Andy had caused us, he did score us some memorable new friends. We practically exploded out of the woods and made a mad dash across the field toward Finisterre. The sun was rising behind the castle, and for a minute it felt like we were heading right into a fairy tale, not the exact opposite. The school grounds were quiet, and even though I didn't have my watch on, I'd bet it would be another hour or more until the students were here. Hopefully the teachers we needed came to work early. I didn't really... Peg Ahab for a morning person, but I imagined that whaling ship captains never had the luxury of sleeping in. We parted ways at the middle school entrance. Wiki, Kid Mozart, and Hanzo snuck toward the high school, while Brady, Cleopatra, and I tried opening the middle school doors as quietly as we could. Creak! Not a good start, I whispered to myself. Cleopatra winced and nodded. We tiptoed into the school one after another. Brady didn't make a sound and was an A-plus ninja. Cleopatra was stealthy except for her clanky jewelry, which made her a B-plus ninja, but I would have been expelled from ninja school and never invited back. I walked as quietly as a full-sized T-Rex, doing the cha-cha, stumbling all over the place in my attempts to walk in silence. Halfway down the main hallway, Cleopatra motioned for us to stop. The pirates have never seen me before, so I can pretend that I work here. It's better if you sneak ahead a bit while I provide backup and guard the rear. If any pirates start to threaten you, I'll let them feel the wrath of Isis. I glanced at her steely eyes and instantly felt bad for any pirate who touched us. 
the mood quickly shifted from our adrenaline-pumping race through forest and field to the quiet terror of being caught by a pirate in a classroom. I hoped Cleopatra had good eyes, because I bet a pirate could stab us a hundred times before she caught up with us. The closest teacher is Mr. Scrimshaw, um, Ahab. He's only two hallways away, I whispered to Brady as we turned the corner to another hallway. Once we get him, Miss Vlad and Miss Callow are close by. Hopefully one of them knows where Don Quixote's classroom is, and we can head there last. Brady nodded, and we started making our way down the hall when two pirates came out of a door at the other end of it. Yikes! We ducked into an empty classroom and waited until they walked by. No sign of them here either, eh? One said. We've got our crew spread across every floor in this school. We'll find her, and once we do, we'll see what this walking the plank business is all about. Blackbeard seems pretty keen on it, but I doubt it's as rewarding as a good old-fashioned cannonball to the buttocks. That's a good point right there, the other pirate said. The school was officially crawling with pirates. After their voices got far enough away, we peeked out of the classroom and got into super stealth mode, practically slithering down the halls. Every few steps, we'd listen carefully for any noise or see if we caught a whiff of pirate stench. No other pirates seemed to be in the area, so after we got to Ahab's hallway, we sprinted to his room and practically tumbled into it. Ahab was writing something on the chalkboard, but whirled around when he saw us walk in. He immediately knew we were all in trouble. Blackbeard got the bell, and he summoned his pirate friends, and they captured us, but a ninja and a legend saved us, but they were too late because the crew already left for the school, and now they're here, and they probably have Principal Gale, and they're trying to kill her, plus destroy the table. I vomited the words out as I hyperventilated. Blackbeard, Ahab yelled, crushing the chalk in his hand. I told them a thousand times, never trust a pirate. Well, now we have some work to do. Ahab marched over to the helm of his ship deck and grabbed his rugged captain's hat. Then he walked to the chalkboard and took down the giant harpoon that he had on display. Finally, he yanked off his leg. It was a fake? To reveal an ancient-looking peg leg. Let's find our principal, he growled. Brady and I took a second to recover. Standing in front of us was a 200-year-old raging sea dog. But first, let's get Frida and Vlad. Hey, that was our plan. We raced to Miss Callow's room, classroom, but all Ahab had to do was knock with a strange rhythm and she was in the hall in seconds, ready to tussle with some pirates. Brady and I must not have looked like the cleanest, most well-rested siblings of all time. She did a double take, then gave us a big warm hug. I'm so glad you're not hurt. Then she got that intense Miss Callow look on her face. It's time to show that pirate why you don't mess with the faculty here. Um, Miss Callow, I said, raising my hand dumbly. I don't know if we're a match for 15 pirates, but I think we know someone who is. Where can we find... I cleared my throat. Don Quixote? Don Quixote, she replied, like I'd said a hilarious joke. She and Ahab gave each other a look and started cracking up. Did somebody call Don Quixote? A voice behind me boomed. It was a tall guy in a full suit of medieval armor, steel helmet and everything, carrying a huge lance. I jumped up and cheered. Our night! We were going to be okay! But why did I recognize that voice, and why did it not exactly fill me with confidence? The knight opened the visor of his mask. Hola, Javier, Senor Q said. Senor Q? I felt all my hope and confidence deflate. Watch out, mi amigo, he yelled, slamming his visor back down and raising his lance. There is a troll attacking you! He charged at something behind me with his lance, and I spun around. Blackbeard summoned a troll? With a crash, Senor Loco speared some kid's art class sculpture. It shattered on the floor as Q's lance hit the lockers behind it, and he went flying. Aye, Senor Q, not again, said Miss Callow, rubbing her temples. There's no time for your shenanigans, Q, Ahab spat. We must get Vlad and find Gale. Just then, we heard some gruff voices around the corner and ducked into Miss Callow's classroom, Senor Q crawling in behind us, his armor clanking way too loudly. Don't worry, Ed. When we find the principal and I'm made first mate in this new world, I'll dub you my first mate. First mate's matey. It has a nice ring to it, no? Hey, wait a second. Sword's out. Do you hear something? We froze in place. 
I swallowed my breath as I heard them draw their swords. They were probably two feet away from us on the other side of the stairs. I could smell them. So that's what death smelled like. Basically like sewage wrapped in steaming hot garbage. It made sense, I guess. I didn't expect death to smell like cupcakes and unicorns. Nothing to hear but your loud breathing, Tom. Maybe it came from over there. They headed down the hall and turned the corner. Then I heard my new favorite voice say, Excuse me, are you gentlemen lost? Um, um, no, ma'am. We were just heading to, um, to meet with a teacher. I think her room's right over there. Scurrying footsteps got quieter and quieter, and then some familiar footsteps approached us. Cleopatra practically floated into the classroom. Brady hugged her, and we quickly explained the situation. The teachers all bowed or got on one knee as she nodded regally. Then we all dashed down the hall to find Miss Vlad. Miss V was already standing outside her classroom with a scowl that made all of her other scowls look like smiles. I knew this would happen. Let's go wipe the smile off that pirate's face. We set off for the pool at full speed, Senor Q's clinking armor and Cleopatra's clanging jewelry making us sound like a really bad marching band. I did the math in my head. One ninja, one warrior queen, a sea captain, an artist, a wannabe knight, a ten-year-old piano prodigy, and three kids up against fifteen of the deadliest pirates known to man. I still didn't like those odds. Have any of you heard of a book called Molly Cat? I asked loudly as we ran. Everyone turned to me and shook their heads. There's a teacher here from a book called Molly Cat. Ring a bell? Nothing but blank stares. The title was also in another language, Brady said. The letters didn't even make sense. They were curvy and squiggly and had dots on them. Probably Arabic, Miss Callow said between breaths. She furrowed her brow like she was solving a crossword puzzle. Molly Cat. The Malalakwet, Mr. Antar, she yelped, snapping her fingers. Our high school poetry teacher. He would be very helpful right now. How did you know that? Forget it. There's no time. Ahab, I'll ask the office to page him and catch up with you in a minute. A famous poet. Fat lot of good that was going to do us. We hit the high school and raced down a stone spiral staircase that got darker and darker as I got dizzier and dizzier. Finally, we got to the bottom, Finisterre's basement. It was time to get our butts beaten by pirates. <laughs>